Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today is the third anniversary of this channel. In order to mark the event, I have decided to start a series relative to claims that the microwave background constitutes a direct proof of the Big Bang. Two of my previous lectures on the topic are linked below. This includes the 2018 talk that I gave in Bulgaria on water as the source of the monopole. You will also find a link to an interview in Germany last year as it covers much of my philosophy relative to affecting a change in science. My earlier videos on the microwave background might have covered the material rather quickly. As a result, I have decided to tackle the problem once again, hopefully in about 10 short videos. This will provide more detail while adopting a slower pace. There are many aspects of the microwave background measurements and the surest way to learn the subject is to fully dissect each subtopic. It takes years of study to understand what cosmology has done in its evaluation of the microwave background. The papers are both complex and numerous. Thus glancing at a few papers for a couple of hours is not sufficient. As a case in point, when I first started analyzing the microwave background papers, I read them over and over again. Each time, I would mark the front pages with my initials. Many were initialized more than half a dozen times. That is the difference between reading casually and actually trying to understand something critically. If you carefully study the earlier works on the microwave background and the results of the COBE, WMAP, and Planck satellites, you will come to recognize that such studies are filled with problems. I have previously stated that cosmology is not science. Eventually, physics itself will come to the same conclusion. Cosmologists claim to have created anisotropy maps associated with the early universe. They invoke that they have measured the first trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang. In response, many of us can only endure the loss of reason. Regrettably, a few individuals have taken cosmologists at their word and this has resulted in some rather strange pronouncements. The most famous was in the form of a documentary film, The Principle, for which links are provided below. In this work, the producers argued that the Earth occupied a special location in the universe. This is contrary to the Copernican principle, which states that no such character can be assigned to our planet. The topic has serious religious overtones, but regrettably, in this case, Bad science led to bad religion. The same can be said with the very concept of the Big Bang. The idea was first advanced by a Jesuit priest, Father Georges Lemaitre, but in my view it suffers not only from scientific overreaching, but first and foremost from arrogance. Humanity will never know the extent, temperature, and origin of the entire universe. Those who claim otherwise fail to appreciate the meagerness of human knowledge and are the first to accept conjecture as fact. Perhaps through this series, some of these shortcomings will now be exposed. Still, let me be clear, I attack neither sound science nor religion. I do, however, reject both bad science and bad religion, the hallmarks of modern cosmology. In any event, the Earth's position is no more special than that of any other location in the universe. Yet the documentary, The Principle, claimed the contrary. In order to do so, the film took to heart results from the WMAP satellite. The producers interviewed and apparently paid several prominent cosmologists who provided opinions. Many of these scientists later claimed that they had been deceived. Yet the producers only extrapolated what the cosmologists themselves had unknowingly advanced. Claiming that the anisotropy maps have meaning does have consequences. As lay people, the producers can hardly be singled out. As supposed flag bearers for modern science, the cosmologists were much more culpable. I include links relative to this entire affair such that anyone can get the flavor of how wild some of these claims have been by those who have given both a primordial and a religious nature to the microwave background. People often ask me, well, if there was no Big Bang, then what? Actually, my response has always been the same. We will never know. There are some aspects of human existence 
which will be forever beyond our grasp, namely the extent and origin of the universe. Cosmologists claim that we live in the age of precision cosmology. They not only argue that we have data, but that this data is precise. In reality, what we have are misassignments, gross data processing errors, theoretical overreaching, violations of the laws of physics, and dismissal of all evidence proving that the precise data is neither precise in the case of the anisotropy maps, nor cosmological in the case of the monopole. We have never measured the monopole of the microwave background at L2, and we never will. We have never measured a 2.7 Kelvin temperature at that location, although the Planck team claims that it certainly has. Such claims demonstrate a lack of knowledge as to what constitutes real data in science and what represents merely noise and data processing artifact. It also reflects the desperate lengths to which cosmologists will go to affirm their findings. The manner in which a 2.7 Kelvin temperature has been claimed to be measured at L2 by the Planck team is nothing short of wishful thinking. We will go through these claims in upcoming videos. If all this seems to be over your head right now, don't give up. We are going to work our way through it such that you become familiar with what it all means. This will include a review of what the WMAP, COBE, and Planck satellites have measured while highlighting their location. We will begin with measurements of the monopole by Penzias and Wilson, along with other notable measurements obtained from Earth. After this, we'll discuss the anisotropy maps. We will also discuss water and Kirchhoff's law and reveal that the anisotropy maps have absolutely no scientific merits. We will do so by analyzing the results of the WMAP satellite in detail. That is all for today. I have yet to discuss data, but I felt it important to comment on these issues in one segment. That way we can focus on what has happened in later videos and re-emphasize at that time the conclusions outlined here. The next video will appear in about one week and I will try to complete this video series as rapidly as possible. In the meantime, you're invited to watch the interview in Germany, the longer videos already produced on the microwave background, or better still, to slowly begin digesting my papers on the COBE, WMAP and Planck satellites, which are linked below. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the video to your local astronomy club. Support me with a like and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.